Most of the students get MCQs on diuretics wrong. Not even 50% of people who attempted these MCQs could get correct answer. These are the MCQs that I had already posted in the community and many of you might have attempted these MCQs. So today you can also see if your answer was correct or wrong. MCQ is a very good method of understanding or learning any topic or concept. So in today's video, along with solving the MCQs, we will also learn some important concepts of diuretics. So friends, without wasting much time, let's start the MCQs. Before going for solving the actual MCQs, we must have some basics to be properly understood. So friends, this is the chart and this chart will show how the levels of different substance in the blood are when a patient is given a loop diuretic or a thiazides. The differences between loop di diuretics and thiazides is a very popular question asked in the entrance exam. So this is a very important basic concept. So as you can see, when a loop diuretic is given to a patient, the level of sodium, chloride, potassium, calcium, magnesium and hydrogen ions. Everything is decreased in the blood. And the level of uric acid, glucose and lithium, it increases in the blood. And when thiazides are given to the patient, the uh, levels are almost same as loop diuretics and the exception is only in the calcium. As you can see here, in case of uh, loop diuretics, the level of calcium in the blood is decreased. That, that is, there is hypocalcemia and in case of thiazides, the level of calcium is increased. That is, there is hypercalcemia. So, this is the important concept. Now, next we are going to see the site of action and the mechanism of action of different types of diuretics. So, first we are going to draw a nephron. So, this is the nephron. This is the proximal convoluted tubule. This is the descending limb of loop of Henle. This is the ascending limb of loop of Henle. This is the distal convoluted tubule and this is the collecting duct. Now the drugs like acetazolamide, acetazolamide, they act at proximal convoluted tubule. Then the drugs like mannitol, they act on the proximal convoluted tubule and the descending limb. Then the drugs like furosemide or the loop diuretics, they act at the thick part of the ascending limb of loop of Henle. Then the drugs like thiazides, they act on the earlier part of the distal convoluted tubule. And the drugs like spironolactone, they act on the uh, latter part of the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. And then how these drugs act? The drugs like acetazolamide, they inhibit the enzyme called as carbonic anhydrase. Mannitol is a osmotic diuretic. The furosemide, it acts by inhibiting a pump called as sodium, potassium, chloride, co-transporter. Thiazides act by inhibiting the enzyme called as sodium chloride symporter and spironolactone acts by inhibiting the aldosterone receptors. So the so these two slides that I have shown to you, these are the very important basics that one should know for solving different MCQs on the uh, diuretics. So now let's uh, start with the MCQs.
So this is the first MCQ. Which of the following adverse effects is more typical of loop diuretics than thiazides? So hyperuricemia. Hyperuricemia is caused by both drugs. Hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis. This is also caused by both drugs because both decrease the potassium in the blood and both decrease hydrogen ions in the blood. So this answer is also wrong. Hyperglycemia. Both drugs cause hypoglycemia. Now regarding hypocalcemia. We have seen that thiazides cause hypercalcemia and loop diuretics called hypocalcemia. So this is the correct answer. Now let's see how many people have answered this correctly. So only 22% of people have answered this correctly. And how many people have attempted this question? 809. Now our next MCQ. A 50 year old male with resistant hypertension is prescribed a diuretic that inhibits sodium chloride symporter in the early distal convoluted tubule. Which of the following additional actions is expected from this drug? So friends, I have already made a video on resistant hypertension where I have explained that uh, the combination of drugs that patient is given in resistant hypertension, one of the drug must be a diuretic. So if you want to see that video on resistant hypertension, we, you can click here or the link is also given in the description box. So now what is the diuretic that is given to the patient? So here there are two clues. First, it is a sodium chloride. It, uh, it inhibits the sodium chloride symporter and it acts on the early distal convoluted tubule. So can you tell me in the comment box what is this diuretic? Yes, you are correct. The diuretic is a thiazide type of diuretic. So now, does this thiazide cause hyperkalemia? No, it causes hypokalemia. So this is wrong answer. Does it increases lithium, lithium clearance? No, it decreases the clearance and cause lithium toxicity. So this is also wrong answer. Does it cause ototoxicity at high doses? No, this is caused by furosemide or loop diuretic. So the answer is, is it reduces calcium excretion because it causes hypercalcemia. So this is the correct answer. Now let's see how many of you have answered it correctly. Only 29% of people have answered this correctly. And uh, how many have attempted? 532. Now the next question. A patient with ascites due to cirrhosis is started on spironolactone. Which of the following side effects is due to its mechanism of action as an androgen receptor antagonist? So friends, this spironolactone is a aldosterone receptor antagonist, but it also inhibits the androgen receptors and progestin receptors. So it causes different type of side effects in males and females. So what are the side effects in males? The side effects in males are gynecomastia, decreased libido, impotence. All these are the side effects that are due to low testosterone. And in females, there are menstrual irregularities. Then there are or there is also breast engorgement and tenderness so what what will be the answer here gynecomastia so this is the answer so how many have given correct answer 46 percent of people have given correct answer so now the next mcq is like this a 45 year old woman with cirrhosis and ascites is on spironolactone then she develops breast tenderness and irregular menses, which are the side effects of spironolactone. Now, uh, the question is, which drug can be used as an alternative with least endocrine side effects? Before going for this MCQ, you should first know why spironolactone is used in liver cirrhosis. So, in liver cirrhosis, there is secondary hyperaldosteronism. And we know that spironolactone is aldosterone antagonist and hence spironolactone is used in cirrhosis. Now all these four drugs 
अमिलोराइड ट्राइमटेरिन एंड फ्यूरोसिमाइड दिस ऑल दिस थ्री ड्रग्स हैव ऑलमोस्ट नो एंडोक्राइन साइड इफेक्ट्स एंड एप्लेरोनोन हैज ए वेरी माइल्ड अमाउंट ऑफ एंडोक्राइन साइड इफेक्ट बट एप्लेरोनोन इज द ओनली ड्रग दैट इज अल्डोस्टेरॉन एंटेगोनिस्ट सो हियर द आंसर विल बी एप्लेरोनोन नो ओनली थर्टी थ्री परसेंट ऑफ पीपल हैव आंसर्ड दिस क्वेश्चन करेक्टली Now the next question is a 65 year old man presents with raised intracranial pressure following trauma mannitol infusion is planned which of the following is a contraindication for its use now let's see how mannitol works so this is a renal tubule and when mannitol is given to the patient mannitol is given to the patient it is a osmotic diuretics and hence water increased water is retained in the renal tubules and this is ultimately excreted this is the way uh, mannitol acts as a osmotic diuretic and like in renal tubules this mannitol also works as osmotic diuretic in the osmotic diuretic in the blood vessel and here also the water it is absorbed from the tissues into the blood and due to this what happens the volume of the blood increases so the mannitol as it is a osmotic diuretic and it pulls water from the tissues into the blood cerebral edema is the indication of mannitol so it is not a contraindication similarly raised intraocular pressure is also indication it is not a contraindication and it is also used in certain drug overdoses because it increases the renal blood flow and increases the excretion of certain drugs so these are all the indications acute pulmonary edema as mannitol increases the blood volume the risk of pulmonary edema increases in the patient so this is a contraindication and this is our correct answer so how many 41% have given this answer correctly now this is our last mcq a 32 year old woman with idiopathic intracranial hypertension is prescribed acetazolamide a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor which of the following is the most likely adverse effect in this patient so friends acetazolamide does not cause hyperkalemia it cause hypokalemia so this is a wrong answer it also does not cause ototoxicity and causes very mild hyponatremia so this is also a wrong answer now you have only two choice whether metabolic alkalosis and hypocalcemia or metabolic acidosis and renal stones so how this drug works this drug Uh, when it is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor the hco3 is excreted in urine it is excreted in the urine means hco3 is decreased in the blood so it will cause metabolic acidosis and then why renal stones because hco3 is excreted in the urine the urine becomes alkaline and hence calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate they becomes less soluble and there are then increased chances of renal stones so this is the correct answer metabolic acidosis and renal stones so around 30% of uh, people have answered uh, this question correctly so friends in this way in this video we tried to learn different concepts of diuretics with the help of mcqs if you find this video helpful and if you want more such videos on mcqs then comment yes in the comment box and you can also share this video with your friends especially those who are preparing for the entrance exams and friends if you have come for the first time on this channel then do subscribe this channel for more such clinical knowledge see you in the next video till then thank you